Hey everyone, so today I was going through Unity and I was like, oh, Unity has a flipbook. How do I use it? And going through the Google searches, beams, for some reason there isn't a topic on this. I have a video of how to use the new Shader Graph flipbook. So I thought, why not make a video, help others if you're going to use this too. So perfect example is I want to use this sprite sheet that I made inside of After Effects. Pretty cool. Uh, you, it, you can pretty much use any type of texture sheet animation that you want. But essentially what I'm using is the 2018.30F2 and the HDR pipeline for the render. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and get started. going to create my PBR graph shader. going to call this anim. Right click on you create a new material and I'm just going to call this texture and going to plug this into the plane that I'm using just in case just to get started so let's go ahead and get started all right so in here we just need a couple components going to call this width if I guess build today. I'm going to call this height and I'm then going to make a texture 2D, call this texture and I'm going to look and for me it's this two-way lightning texture here. Going to go ahead and plug that here, here, width and height. Alright, so first thing I need, create a node and call this flipbook. Now Unreal has their own which is automatically animated so I'm going to show you how you can basically uh, use this afterwards in a animation. So in here what I'm going to do is set my width so 6 and 4 and if I look in here the one is pretty much 6 across 4 down. All right, and then oh, need another vector one. Call this tiling, and here. So tile goes in you, height will go into you, and width will go into you. Now you can do the a if you want to do this automatically, you can do a tile and offset. If for some reason it just doesn't give good results, and I'll show you why afterwards. So for here, for the texture 2D, you need to put this into a sample texture node. Out value goes into the UV, and you notice how it automatically does what I needed to do. Now for the invert X and Y, you can play around with these, but it basically just makes the texture. So if you want to play around with these, you are more than welcome to. Now RGB will go into the albedo. All right, and then the alpha will go into the alpha. Now in here, uh, for the gear, I'm going to change the surface because you notice I have a not transparent background. Why is it working? I just need to change this to transparent. And if I want, I can hit two-sided. And once this compiles, what this will do is it'll give me, allow me to be able to see it on both sides of the mesh. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Wait for it to compile. Excellent. Now in here, I have to set the texture again. So type in two-way texture. All right, so you notice it's on here. And if I scrub through the tiling, for some reason it has this weird type of effect. But if I do one, two, three, you'll notice that it is actually animating. It's kind of a weird concept. But yeah, it, it works. So what's neat though is I can actually do an animation on this. Let me go ahead and hit save. So if I want, I can actually go window, make an animation going to call this test anim 
And in here, what I'm not going to do is I'm going to hit this and I'm going to hit one here so that way I can get the mesh render material to pop up. But what I'm going to do is set this back to zero. And I'm going to go ahead and pause it, but essentially you're going to go through, you're going to go to one, hit one, two to two. So once this is done, I'll show you what I did, and then I'll show you an issue to correct afterwards. All right, excellent. Okay, so with those set now, basically if I scrub through the timeline, one, two, and for this it's 824. Anim uh, 24 sprites on the animation so that's what's going to scrub through now unfortunately if I hit play you'll notice it's doing that weird issue I was showing you earlier but because it's going through all of the milliseconds too so how to fix that is if you go down to the curves editor and you select on all of them go to right click hit both tangents and if you hit constant You'll notice if I hit play, it actually will keep them in a constant state. And it will make it to where they don't screw, uh, move around as it did. And it makes it to where your animations are playing constantly in a nice way. And then what's neat is, let's go ahead and go back into here. And let's just change you to, we can basically do 30 frames now. So you can play around with this, make it to where how fast you want it to go. If you want it at 60, that's fine. But if you want to play with the speed, that's how you do it is in the samples. And if you want to, since it's constant, uh, let's try auto. No, don't do auto. OK, disregard what I'm doing. Yeah, don't change it. So, <laughs> but in a way, but yeah, so that's how you go about doing that. And then if we hit play, wait for it to do it, and then you'll notice that it's actually animating now. Now, it's kind of dark, so another thing that you can do, which is actually pretty neat inside of Shader Graph, is you have the emission value so if you want you can actually add a color eh, call it what you want I'm just going to go with HDR wait for it to compile you can change this to HD plug it into the emission values afterwards wait for it to compile for some reason it's like really slow. Maybe they're still in beta or alpha mode. Let's go ahead and bring this down. And in here, I'm gonna bump this like say one. And then what's neat is if I change the color, it's actually affecting my sprite sheet. So let's say I wanted a nice purple or magenta I can basically bump up the amount and you'll notice how it's affecting it maybe a little bit too bright so maybe at a one or two is subtle and what I'm using is the post processing so you want to make sure you have your main camera with the post processing layer the layer post processing make sure your layer is also set up here for the layer mask and then inside of an empty game object, I have the post-process volume script. And also make sure you have the post-processing layer mask as well. Otherwise, what you're seeing here will not reflect on your end. And then I'm just using color grading, bloom, and infinity. Uh, I think that's how you say it. But yeah, so but that's how I'm getting the nice HD glow effect here is because of that. All right, well, let's actually go back into Anim. This is real quick how you set it up. Vector one value for your width, vector one value for your height, property for your tiling is a vector one, 
uh, texture 2D that goes into your albedo, alpha goes into alpha, and you want to make sure you're on transparent with two-sided. I hope that was helpful. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, take care and have a great rest of your day.